Doctor, can you please introduce yourself? Well, uh, I'm Dr. Muhammad Salah Din Zaki, Assistant Professor of Nephrology in the National Institute of uh, Nephrology and Urology in Cairo. Uh, I'm here in uh, uh, this conference, which is the 36th uh, annual conference of the Egyptian Society of Nephrology, uh, participating as a uh, speaker. I had a lecture uh, yesterday. Okay, and what do you think about ESNT 2018? Well, every year ESNT uh, represents the uh, festival for all nephrologists in Egypt and uh, in the Arab world and Middle East. Uh, it is the biggest conference uh, usually held in this time of the year at the end of February and the beginning of March. Um, the continuity of uh, holding such uh, esteemed uh, conference for the last 36 years uh, sometimes it is joined with uh, other uh, scientific societies. Uh, last year we had the Arab Society of Nephrology with us. Uh, it was a, a joint meeting. Uh, this conference usually uh, uh, is the, uh, the ultimate for uh, nephrologists here. We uh, meet each other. Uh, we know the new uh, about uh, uh, nephrology science generally in all the branches dialysis transplantation so forth and uh, uh, we transfer this knowledge to uh, younger generations uh, we have the collaboration with other uh, societies from the Arab societies International Society of Nephrology and IFKF and so forth and uh, this interaction represents uh, the modality of uh, continuous medical education um, uh, also, the unity between the members of the Egyptian Society of Nephrology is an important issue. It, uh, uh, our society has a very peculiar uh, characteristic that it is a very unified one. In most of the other branches, uh, the society ha has been uh, divided to uh, many su sub-societies or other competing societies. The Egyptian Society of Nephrology and Renal Transplantation is uh, a very unified uh, and solid mass. Um, it uh, interacts with the practice uh, of nephrology in Egypt. Uh, it is a, a bridge between nephrologists and uh, the uh, government, the syndicate, uh, the um, uh, universities, and so forth. So. Uh, it is very important to keep it this way and to uh, uh, magnify the amplitude of the society uh, more and more. Okay. And doctor, what was your presentation about yesterday? I had the presentation about a topic called delayed graft function. Uh, you know, when you perform kidney transplantation, uh, what we hope for and what's usually uh, happens, uh, especially in our practice here in Egypt, because we still uh, have only living donors. We don't have uh, deceased or cadaver donors. So what we usually uh, face is that the kidneys transplant to work immediately after we transplant it. In a percentage of patients, fortunately not very high because we uh, still perform living donor uh, transplantation, from four to 10%, the graft function does not, um, uh, is not established immediately. It is delayed. It, it, it takes up to one week to reach the target uh, creatinine. And sometimes we need to do dialysis. And this is what we call delayed graft function. Uh, though it's not that common in our practice now, but in view of the future, that we are um, uh, trying to implement cadaver uh, transplantation, which is from deceased or uh, dead uh, donors, uh, we will start to face this more and more. And another issue is that even when we perform it, whether for cadaver or for living donors, many of the causes that lead to uh, delayed graft function is modifiable and preventable causes. So if you can modify the uh, 
cause that will reduce the function of the graft or delay the function of the graft, and it is modifiable. So why don't we do it? Even it's 4%, 5%, 10%, still it's a percentage. It's a very precious organ that we should do all the effort to uh, uh, chase even uh, every single kidney. Um, uh, the factors that influence it are uh, usually things in the preparation for transplantation, preparation for, uh, for the donor, preparation for the recipient, in the process of transplantation itself, process of the surgical process itself, many of these factors can be uh, modified and to get better results. So that was the core of the lecture. It was about the definition of the late graph function, which has many definitions. That, uh, it's very, um, you know, um, uh, different from um, country to country, from practice to practice, school to school. Europe, America, everyone has his own uh, definition and the uh, uh, management of such a problem. Thank you very much.